From Nazi fighting witches to lewd photos in the background of a beloved animated movie, these Disney films hit a little different when you rewatch them as an adult. The story of Pinocchio is kid-friendly enough. Geppetto is a kindly toy maker who carves a wooden boy named Pinocchio with the wish that he become a real boy. His wish is partially granted when a blue fairy arrives and gives the wooden figure life, promising to turn him into a human if he proves himself worthy enough. However, Pinocchio and his friend Jiminy Cricket are soon whisked away by the conniving Honest John and Gideon, who send him to Pleasure Island for a so-called vacation. Upon arrival, Pinocchio and other hoodlum boys engage in all sorts of underage debauchery. From child human trafficking to underage drinking to the transformation of young boys into anthropomorphic donkeys against their will, there's a lot wrong with this narrative that young audiences must have surely missed upon their first viewing. While the film doesn't exactly glamorize these behaviors either, the whimsical animation style makes Pinocchio's kidnapping and the events of Pleasure Island look much sillier than they would be in actuality. This problem is partially remedied in the recent live-action remake, which amplifies things like the donkey transformation to a whole new level of grotesque. That's just the trouble with the world today. Dumbo is a sweet young elephant whose major flaw is his overly big ears, making him the clumsiest performer in the traveling circus he and his mother are a part of. In turn, his mother is extremely protective of him and does whatever she can to fend off assailants who pick on her son. However, while trying to protect Dumbo, she gets into trouble with the circus's ringmaster, who locks her in a cage. This leaves Dumbo to fend for himself. Luckily, with the help of a friendly mouse and a murder of rowdy crows, he's able to find his true gift and become the star of the circus. In many ways, Dumbo is one of Disney's most heartwarming stories and for good reason. Its animation and memorable songs combine to deliver a sweet story about finding your inner strength. But remember those crows? Watching that scene where they help Dumbo to fly now, it's obvious that they were incredibly insensitive depictions of Southern black people. Making the scene even more uncomfortable is the fact that the over-the-top accents were provided by white voice actors. Luckily, the crow's appearances are mostly confined to one sequence. Still, while the film can be seen on Disney+, Plus, it does come with a disclaimer about their inclusion. After King Stefan and his queen proudly welcome their daughter, Princess Aurora, into the world, they arrange for her to marry a young prince from another land when she's grown. While in her cradle, Aurora is visited by four fairies. Three of them kindly bless her with magical gifts, while the fourth curses her so that at the age of 16, she will prick her finger on a spinning wheel and cease to live. Luckily, the three good fairies manage to alter the curse so that she won't die, but instead fall into a deep sleep from which she can only be awakened by the kiss of her true love. Of course, in true fairy tale fashion, all of these events come to pass as prophesied. Prince Philip slays the villainous Maleficent in dragon form and arrives to kiss Princess Aurora to awaken her and live happily ever after. While the narrative is supposed to be romantic, hindsight shows that a man kissing a sleeping woman is anything but romantic. What's worse is that Aurora was betrothed to Philip when she was a baby and has had absolutely no say in her fate thus far. Disney at least tried to lighten up on the troublesome aspects by having the two meet and fall for each other before that meddlesome kiss. But don't you remember? We've met before. We… we have? Well, of course. You said so yourself. Once upon a dream. However, like many classic fairy tales, the story remains an uncomfortable remnant of an even more inappropriate source material that has aged poorly over the years. Up's legendary opening montage depicts Carl Fredrickson as a young boy who looks up to famed explorer Charles Muntz. One day, he meets the adventurous Ellie, and the two embark on a love story that puts even Shakespeare to shame. Over the course of decades, Carl and Ellie get married, move into a house that they fix up together, and while away the hours watching the passing clouds. Over the years, they save up money for a trip to Paradise Falls, but must contend with various mishaps that set them back financially. By the time Carl decides to surprise Ellie with tickets for their dream vacation, Ellie is already suffering too heavily from illness to embark on the trip. Ellie's untimely passing is obviously heartbreaking, but there's another tragic little detail that many of us probably didn't notice when we were young. The happy couple suffers a miscarriage while trying to build the perfect family life together. This revelation is given to us in only one shot, that of Carl consoling a crying Ellie in the doctor's office. Since this moment has no dialogue, kids would likely miss this tragic detail, but it's one that many parents would instantly understand. 
While this heartbreaking circumstance packs an emotional punch that makes the film relatable for viewers of all ages, director Peter Docter told Yahoo that even UPS filmmakers were hesitant to include such a heavy scene in a kid's movie. Quasimodo is the hunchbacked inhabitant of Notre Dame's bell tower, cut off from the rest of the world due to his abnormal appearance. He was placed there as a baby after his mother was killed by the brutal Judge Claude Frollo, who plans to exterminate Paris's Romani population. One of the Romani, a beautiful woman named Esmeralda, rescues Quasimodo from public humiliation in a rare instance of kindness from an outsider. The two become close friends, along with Captain Phoebus, who has defected from Frollo's guard. Quasimodo helps Esmeralda escape, but not before she gives him a map that leads to a Roma haven. Meanwhile, Frollo gets ready to begin his attack on the Romani people. As if this G-rated film wasn't mature enough, there's a scene in the film where Frollo sings a song about how his lust for Esmeralda conflicts with his duty and his religion, putting his soul at risk of eternal damnation. The song is accompanied by some appropriately grim imagery, including towering flames and the congregation of faceless, shadowy-robed figures. The film's co-director, Kirk Wise, told The New York Times that while there was some trepidation among filmmakers around exploring Frollo's sexual fascination with Esmeralda, it was too important to exclude. He explained, We knew that was going to be a really delicate topic, but we also knew we had to tell that story because it's key to the central love rectangle. Inspired by Aladdin and the Magic Lamp from 1001 Nights, Aladdin tells the story of the eponymous dashing vagabond as he's manipulated by the power-hungry Jafar into retrieving a mystical lamp for him from the Cave of Wonders. However, Aladdin ends up keeping the lamp for himself, releasing a genie who promises to grant him several wishes. Three wishes to be exact and ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. Aladdin uses his first wish to become a prince in an attempt to win the heart of Princess Jasmine, but Jafar is determined to become Sultan and will stop at nothing to steal back the lamp and marry Jasmine himself. In many ways, Aladdin was a spiritual successor to the classic Disney animation films of the 1940s and 50s, and even though this film came out in 1992, it was still marked by some controversial elements like its predecessors. The opening musical number featured lyrics sung by a traveling man from a so-called faraway place, which his song depicts as a violent environment where the people are described as barbaric and cruel. The lines didn't sit well with the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, which believed that it portrayed Arabs in a negative manner. Subsequent releases of the film featured lyrics that removed the more insensitive elements of the original song. Miss Bianca and Bernard are intelligent mice and members of the Rescue Aid Society. The two are assigned a case to look for a young orphan girl named Penny who's been kidnapped. After paying Penny's orphanage a visit, Miss Bianca and Bernard learn of a suspicious woman, Madame Medusa, and her previous attempts to whisk Penny away. The minuscule detectives track down Medusa and discover that, in addition to kidnapping Penny, Medusa and her partner, Mr. Snoops, are also planning to acquire the world's largest diamond. Upon discovering Penny's whereabouts, Miss Bianca and Bernard team up with an albatross named Orville to foil Medusa's plan and rescue the orphan. While the rescuers may be overshadowed by some of Disney's other films, it's still a strong entry in their impressive animated canon. However, if you saw the film as a child before 1999, you may have witnessed something that definitely was not meant for your innocent eyes. A two-frame depiction of a nude woman in the background of a scene where Miss Bianca and Bernard are flying through the city on Orville's back. Granted, because it was only two frames in the background, it's highly likely that even the most eagle-eyed viewers wouldn't have spotted the offending image that someone snuck into the film without pausing it. Unfortunately for those adults curious enough to try to hunt down this controversial image, Disney recalled over 3 million copies and censored all future releases of the film. Set in England during World War II, Bedknobs and Broomsticks tells the story of three young siblings who are sent away from their home in London during an attack to be looked after by an eccentric woman named Miss Price. Unhappy with their new home, the children decide to return to London, but change their minds when they discover that Miss Price is an aspiring witch, hoping to use her powers in the fight against the Nazis. She offers to transport the children back to their original home via an enchanted bed, but she needs the final part of a spell before she can do that. So, Miss Price and the children embark on a whimsical adventure featuring magical lands, talking animals, animated household objects, and, unfortunately, Nazis. The movie barely mentions World War II for most of its duration, focusing on the story's more lighthearted elements instead. However, there's a jarring reminder of the Third Reich when a platoon of Nazi soldiers attempts an invasion of Miss Price's home, forcing her to bring some ancient relics to life with an invisible army to fight off the Goose Steppers. 
The Nazis' atrocities aren't mentioned in bed knobs and broomsticks, but older audiences are well aware of them, adding a tinge of grimness to an otherwise silly fantasy movie.